Hey guys, it's Daniel from Stumpy PC. So in today's video, I wanted to go over some ways that you can actually improve your performance max campaigns. Now, as I'm sure you know, it's very unclear as to how to optimize your performance max campaigns. It's more so like a black box where you just enable the campaign, set up your assets and just pray to God that it actually performs well. Now, what I wanted to tell you is that there are still some ways that you can actually optimize your performance max campaigns. And it's just that you need to be looking in the right places. Now, it can be a bit difficult to find these actual uh, spots to optimize your campaigns, but these uh, tips that I provide will actually be very useful and you can apply them to your other campaigns as well. So let's jump right into it. So the first tip that I wanted to provide was when you go in to the campaign selection and then you go to insights, you can take a look. And there's a lot of insight and information about your campaign, how you're performing, how you're showing up next to adver uh, competitor advertisers. And what you can even do is go and take a look at what your competitors are doing and take a look at their website and their um, ads as well. And then understand, okay, what are they doing differently from you and how you can improve your performance. And as well, um, the main perspective here I wanted to cover was the actual search term insights. Now, the only way you can come across this is again, when you go to the campaign selection and then you go to insights and you can see which search categories are leading to conversions or conversion value and which ones have the most search value. Now, what you want to be doing is you want to be taking a look at which terms are actually leading to conversions. Something you might be noticing is that your branded search terms are showing up here and that you're getting a lot of conversions from your branded search terms. Now, that's something you don't want happening because that just inflates the actual results of the PMAX campaign and it's inaccurate because just because you have a high ROAS because you have branded uh, conversions, it doesn't actually mean that campaign is functioning successfully. So you need to think about, okay, how can I exclude this? And the way that you can exclude this is not within the Google Ads dashboard, but you'd have to get in touch with a Google rep you can contact their support and then there's a form that they will send over which you can fill out and uh, include specific negative keywords. So usually when I am running a PMAX campaign, I don't want to focus on branded spend. So I would make sure that I fill out this form when getting in touch with the Google rep and add my branded search terms as a negative keyword. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to focus more of our budget onto main product category keywords or main search themes that we've inserted into the campaign so that we can get more conversion value or conversions for the search terms that actually matter. It can be for whether it's cold traffic and you're trying to attract cold traffic using this campaign, or if it's more so for middle of funnel or bottom of funnel, people that are searching specifically for that product, but you don't want to be showing up for uh, branded search terms. Okay. And another thing I wanted to go into as well, right under this, you have audience insights. Now, as I'm sure you know, PMAX works very highly based on the audience uh, selection. So they have search themes and they have audience uh, audiences. And when you're setting up your performance max campaign, as I, I'm sure you remember, you had to select different uh, data signals. So you create these signals and within these signals, you have the audiences that you select and you also have your first party data. Now, what I wanted to highlight that's very important is you include as much first party data as possible for the PMAX campaign, because what it's gonna allow it to do is get a better understanding of the potential customers that it can target and also past converters of, um, your, uh, of your store. And if it has that information, it can better optimize to get you more conversions because the goal of a PMAX campaign is to get you more conversions or conversion value. And the way that it knows how to do that is when you provide it with ample first party data. Now, another thing is you provide it with audiences. So my usual recommendation for people when setting up a performance max campaign is look at the high converting audiences that you have in your search campaigns or other campaigns. Maybe it's your search, maybe it's your shopping. And I usually recommend that before switching over to performance max and select those audiences into your performance max campaign because you already have data and the fact that they actually perform well. Now, the only thing with PMAX is yes, you give it audiences, but these act more as a suggestion rather than um, a specific path for it to follow, meaning it can still go outside of the audiences that you select. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because it can go out and find new conversions for you from audiences that you didn't think about. And it can also give you ideas as to other audiences to target, maybe in your search campaigns or your shopping campaigns. And it can just improve your performance as well because it's essentially using its machine learning to figure out the best performing audiences. Now, when we go into here, for example, 
is you'll see they're either highlighted in green, optimized, meaning Google's already optimizing for this, and you'll have a blue one with signal, meaning you have selected that audience. Now, these ones that are optimized, I would focus on them and see which ones are relevant to you. For example, if you're like a technology related store, like this business, Technofile is great because these are for tech savvy people. Um, it really depends on the types of products that you uh, that you offer. But think about the audiences that it shows up here because there's seven here. Um, it really will vary how many it actually shows up for you. Think about the ones that ir are irrelevant and maybe you want to exclude them into your other campaigns. So, for example, for this business, a health and fitness buff wouldn't be so uh, so relevant for this business. So when we go into some of our other campaign types as well, we're going to want to exclude that because we just don't want to show up for that. But there's other more relevant ones like shopping enthusiasts, luxury shoppers, technophiles, because these are higher ticket products. So this appeals to that type of audience demographic, and it's good that, that we're showing up for these specific type of audiences. Okay, take a look at in your Performance Max campaigns is when you go to the actual campaign and then go to Overview, and also not in the Insight section, and you scroll down, you can see an asset performance report. Now, this is quite useful as well because it tells you all the different types of headlines, descriptions, and assets that you have, and it gives it performance a performance rating once it has enough information about that asset. So it can take some time until it actually gives data. So it'll say no, uh, not enough uh, data or something like that. But take a look at which um, assets you have with low performance and which ones you have with best performance. And I would say just optimize the low um, low performing assets because you don't, if, if Google is giving that a poor rating, then chances are it's just, again, not performing well. And that's really the best indicator of how to optimize your Pmax ads with these, uh, with these asset performance labels. Now, the only thing we don't know is how is Google actually deeming these performance ratings? Because let's say it's for a click-through rate. Like if we have a poor click-through rate for these headlines or descriptions, then we don't really care because if it has a low click-through rate, but a high conversion rate, then we don't want to change anything. But I use this still as a decent diagnostic tool. Like you can, you can take a look at your assets and understand, okay, maybe this isn't as high relevant, or I didn't think this was going to perform too well, or I can think of a better idea. And you can essentially test out and take a look. Okay, I switched this headline, um, this low performing headline to a different headline. Let's see how it performs over the coming week or two weeks. Now, something I want to emphasize as well, when you're in your performance max campaigns, don't over optimize it. So again, there's not a crazy amount of optimizations you can do. But I would say that focus on maybe once a week, I would focus on once a week, taking a look at your different assets, for example, your asset performance, look at the audiences you have, look at the search themes that you have. Those are very, very important. Now, another thing we can do as well is when we go into the when and where ads showed, and then we can go to devices, we can actually filter by devices. Now, what I usually say, um, again, in this account, we didn't get too much uh, traction in terms of the TV screens. If you have a lot on TV screens, a lot of uh, impressions or clicks, so you don't really want to have that placement because it's so unlikely that somebody sees your ad on a TV screen and pulls out their phone and actually makes a search as well. So I usually don't recommend advertising on TV screens at all and just taking that off. Um, but you can also look at which devices you have performing quite well or have a low uh, cost per conversion. And then you can optimize that. Again, you need ample data to be able to know that, like several and high number of conversions to do so. We just don't have a lot of conversions here. This is a more recently uh, released Pmax campaign. So it's taking some time until it starts to peak, pick up. But once we get more conversion data, let's say we see that we have um, I don't know, 30 conversions from tablets and we have the same number of conversions on mobile, but the CPA is significantly lower. So maybe we need to focus more on budgets, more budgets um, on tablet and decrease the actual bid. So you can make bid adjustments here, increase or de decrease. If you completely want to take something off, so I would usually recommend that you de uh, completely decrease um, TV screens. I would just put in 100%. So that means your $10 bid becomes zero. You have no bid, meaning you won't show up. And then you can exclude that placement as well. I would say that the shopping network is honestly, is arguably the most important um, part of a Pmax campaign because that's where you're gonna pick up on the most conversions. And it also uses the uh, algorithm to uh, essentially supplement and improve the performance of your shopping uh, of your shopping network. So it's more powerful than a shopping standard shopping campaign, except the only thing is you have less control. So you're essentially giving up one component of it to get another, which is the machine, uh, the sh machine's capabilities. 
Now, the thing that you want to be looking at in your PMAX campaigns as well is where your spend is going towards. And I'm going to show you how you can actually get that set up and actually see where your spend is going for your PMAX campaigns. Because if you see where most of your budget is being allocated towards, you can make specific optimizations to improve your efforts as well. So I'm going to show you actually how to do that because you can't do that in the Google Ads dashboard, but I'll give you some tools to do so. But for now, we're in this shopping section. Now, what I wanted to highlight here was that we are only targeting four different types of products here, but we can look at the actual conversions and which products are actually performing, which products are performing at a low rate and having a high cost per conversion as well. So you really wanna assess the actual metrics that you have inside of your account. I'm just giving an example here, but we have one product essentially getting the most conversions. Again, this is a newer PMAX campaign, as I mentioned. So I'm not really making any changes just yet, but if you see a camp uh, and a, a product is getting like 100 clicks, but essentially no conversion value, then you probably want to shut it off and just continue focusing on your better performance and test out different product variants that are related and should be in the same asset group. So all of these products are related and they all go into this one asset group, which is where I've paid, paired four of them together. And then I've put another product category into another asset group as well. So you really want to assess your uh, key metrics when it comes to your shopping uh, shopping network and see where you can actually shut off different um, different products and see where you can introduce new products to improve the performance because this is arguably the most important. Again, because if you have most of your spend on shopping or that's the goal, your image and video assets aren't as significant if it's only like 2-3% of your budget. And that's really what you want to go for. You want like 80% of your budget to be towards shopping because that's, where, again, where the best placements are. And so the last point I wanted to talk about was um, installing Mike Rhodes PMAX script. Now there's a PMAX script that you can use, which allows you essentially to unlock some functions that you wouldn't have in the Google Ads dashboard. The way that you can upload a script is when you go to tools and then you can go to bulk actions and scripts. Some people have been using this, but some people don't know about it, especially like if you're not a Google Ads specialist, you won't really know this. Um, and my specific goal here is just to talk about like your uh, any business just trying to promote their Google Ads efforts. So you should be using this performance max script, especially if you're an e-commerce based store. Make sure that you have this performance max script installed. Why you want it installed is for the reason that you want to see where your actual spend is being allocated and where you're getting the most conversions as well. Because within the Google Ads dashboard, you don't understand where your spend is being allocated. And for that reason, you don't have as much insight as possible to actually optimize your accounts correctly, opt optimize your campaigns correctly. Because if you, let's say if you see that a lot of your spend is going towards display or YouTube and you want to be thinking about how you can limit those efforts and limit your placements there. So something you can do, for example, is if you're just using a maximized conversion value or you set a low T ROAS goal, consider increasing your actual target return on ad spend goal, because if you're giving Google more constraint on where it can, uh, or on how you want it to get conversions, because if you want it to get more conversions within your limit, because you're setting a higher target return on ad spend goal, it's gonna try to push higher quality placements so it can achieve the goal for you. But if you set a lower T ROAS and it already achieves that goal, then it's gonna stop pushing as high quality of placements. And that's where you can start to see wasted ad spend and placements that just don't have very high conversion rates. So that's the main thing I would say when it comes to this PMAX script, is just taking a look at the allocation of your spend and how to better optimize your campaign or which parts of your campaign to actually focus on and improve. Okay, so that wraps up some of my tips when it comes to performance max campaigns. Now, like I said, it's a bit, it, there's there's not too much to do when it comes to optimizing PMAX campaigns because a lot of it is based on the algorithm, but the goal here is to just continue to guide it in the right direction. So we want it to show up for the right search themes um, and not our branded search themes. We want it to show up for the right products uh, and for the strong performing products and essentially just giving it as much proper information as possible based on what we want it to do. Um, and also making sure that we're using this performance max script because it allows you to understand um, more. It allows you to get more insight about where your spend is going and how to better optimize your efforts. Okay. 
that wraps up my video on how to optimize performance max campaigns if you found that useful um, just let me know in the comments and leave me a like that would just help me get my videos more so out there and i'll see you in the next video thanks so much for watching